In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. And we are off to the races. I said races, not racist. Um, because we're all about racing, we're not all about racist. Far from it. This is another pointless <laughs> automotive podcast. How's that for an intro? Um, it, it's I, it's awe intro. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 awe inspiring. And that that voice was Chadwick, and I'm Frank. How are you, Chadwick? Good, Frank. How you doing, bud? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Um, ah, and I Miller wanted. Time. To... Oh, is it Miller time? Uh, mm. You're um you're tapping. Wait, no, that's that's Coors is tapping the Rockies. What is what is Miller's ta- uh, tapping low budget? Like what is that what is ass? It's well, it's a fine Pilsner beer. You know, Miller Lite was the first really genuinely successful light beer. Genuine draft, if you will. <laughs> you can get that's that too. Right. The MGD. Um, I'm working. Uh, I'm working with my my neighborhood um, speakeasy's finest. This is Five Sons. This is their standard pale ale. Uh, it's it's in a tallish can um and it's it's not um i suppose it is american it's oh, not uh, it's not yeah. a, it's not like a european lager it's a pale ale but it's not like a british uh traditional pale ale um you know it's it's, it's not like your standard european beer <laughs> but i wanted to talk about something european Oh, before I say that, the, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you view this, sure. our viewers, listeners, you won't be able to see it. But basically, that description means Frank will be pinky up whilst drinking tonight. And I'll That's just right. be crushing I'm wearing a like... button up. I'm wearing a, a, a <laughs> yes. lovely, it's a very lovely formal button up today. On his side of the yeah, screen. It's got, it's, got, it's, got like, uh, it's got like some strawberry shortcake ice cream bars on it. It's, it's lovely. Um, I came from something. You don't need to concern yourself with that. Um, what we do need to concern ourselves with Ooh. today, though, is talking about a specific European manufacturer, one that could probably use a little bit of help mm. in the American marketplace today, but also a, a European manufacturer that has like an absolute wealth of history. It used to be quite the spicy meet the ball. Quite. Yes, they le- they they were in the market and then they left the market. And then they came back in the market and now they're on the cusp of leaving the market. I'm talking your third favorite European uh or, or sorry, your third favorite Italian manufacturer. That's Alpha. Alpha Ooh. Romeo. How are you, uh, Chadwick, how are you up on uh, on Alphas? Are are you um you pretty knowledgeable or not? Cuz I'm not really. I just have no. an affinity for them. Like you know, I, I- I like I like the brand. I like the history of the brand. I'd probably say I have a uh, mild grade school education as far as Alpha goes. So, are you smarter than a fifth grader? You remember that show with uh, who was the, the the one redneck that was on it? Jeff Foxworthy, man. Yes, thank you. Yeah. The redneck comedy tour. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of the same. I know a little bit. Like, there's Buso V sixes, and like they made one of my favorite. 70s cars of all time um and so yeah but they they what do you know about current so like today alpha because i don't i don't think there's a whole lot to write home about and so yeah i'm I'm glad you asked me that without prompting i actually took some notes about that specific topic so For you informed or not informed buyers out there if you take a cursory glance at alpha romeo's web page they have three vehicles for sale currently and there are some variations and you know how we are we don't really count the performance variations as a separate model yeah, so you have three, yeah you have yeah. three vehicles right so you have you have a sedan their julia which is actually from all reviews a pretty damn good sports car uh the quadra i'm gonna mess this up quadrafoglio i say it? mario 64 voice is what gets you through that uh is a very very good performance sports car you have the stelvio which is kind of their sporty suv and then the newer one is the tonali and that Tenale. is a kind of like a sporty crossover type deal and that's it and that's even that one i oh. my understanding is it's a it's a plug-in hybrid the tona the tonali that's the new one the 2024 uh, you know, plug-in hybrid SUV with a 1.3 liter turbocharged four-cylinder and hybridization um, to give it, I believe, a whole like 30 miles of electric range. And then 
it touts like the best in class acceleration of like zero to sixty and six seconds, which I suppose is actually pretty okay for us plebes that like hmm. traffic in, you know, bug eye WRXs and um you know, all kinds of slow car fast things, but like sure. as far as competitive in the marketplace for something electrified, that's kind of piss poor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so they have a brand shiny new non-competitive plug-in SUV that looks exactly like their aging on the vine, <laughs> not competitive other SUV that are both probably outselling their aging by all accounts very good but like questionably reliable performance sedan and the whole sedan market is, is kind no of no one cares by the wayside it. yeah fuck fuck cars man yeah yeah so we, that's <laughs> lift it up and our, then i'll buy it should, yeah if, if it ain't a chevy don't raise it up as uh was that snoop i think that was snoop it might be um before be. so before we present our, our plans how to save the company um like you mentioned the history too there's a, there's a few uh few things I want to mention real quick. Please shout out to the Alpha Spiders from the '80s, which were like iconic graduates. Yeah. Oh God. So good. there's so many versions yes. of it too, right? Uh, nice, nice looking sports car. Really cool. Had quite a following. Reliability. Man, when you look that good, who cares? Uh, mm -hmm. You had you had the 4C, which is actually not that ancient, but they don't make it anymore. So pour one out to your Alpha 4Cs. Carbon, you have carbon bodied. Yeah, carbon tubbed and uh, automatic only. We'll get to that later. Um, GTV and GTAs, shout out to those boxy little delicious coupes. Uh, yeah, so Alpha used to make just sports cars. Am I right? So I mean that like that's, that's probably going to come up in the future here. Well, it should be. I and, and I have I have one overarching like note, and and bear with me. I took mm -hmm. a note. Good for this episode. Not a, not notes. A note. I've got a battle that, plan, so I can always present first if you'd like. Well, good. I mean, like my, and I'm curious. I suppose it makes sense. So you'll go first, but I just want to put this out there. My entire quote unquote overarching battle plan is that the entire brand of Alpha needs to exist in a, the realm of pure style and quirk above all else else like that's that's that would be my mantra yes. for them and and when we, we when we've done these exercises in the past i feel like you've always traditionally been more the more uh, i'm trying to trying to think of the way to put this i don't want to say the more wild and outlandish because that's not that's not appropriate but i always try and make it more like market feasible where you were like hey I, I'm I'm trying to build my vision of this, and so you you still more pure to your vision, and I dilute my vision with <laughs> trying to make something that is actually going to function in the future marketplace. And so maybe yeah, you're probably going to poo poo that, which is great. When which is I think make up makes a better case on why you should probably go first. But that would be my my overarching. I do celebrate heritage often in these little these things, like trying to get back to like the better times with these car companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I am often um, outlandish, so it works. But anyway, yeah. without well, so was Alpha. So this is perfect. I, I think so. So my plan, and it's very similar to what you just stated, which is hilarious because I have all my notes written down. I came up with a company creed, and it's we do not chase trends. We're going to go ahead and fall back on our historical sports models. So here is a historic, your historical, historical, mm -hmm. hysterically historical. Uh, the new lineup for Alfa Romeo. Are you ready for this? I've never been more turgid in preparation. Not a damn crossover to be seen, my friend. So here we go. You see, okay, this is why you need to go first because you're you're more pure. <laughs> this I'm, is what I'm, the I'm company is. It. It's a sports yes. car company, man. No, They're I'm Italian. good. Yes. The, you, are you are you starting off? You're launching the beast of Turin all over again. <laughs> Twenty six liters of of pure fury. Are you ready for this? So a new spider. Spider needs to come back. Uh, the market doesn't have any cheap convertibles, save for the perennial favorite, the Miata. They need some Italian competition, something with a little more style, a little more design. The Miata has always been more, you know. Uh, for, function over form. We need something that brings that form equation a little higher. And Italians tend to do that with their design. Yes. So 
I'm thinking with this car, we don't go turbo because I think I think the turbo robs a lot of personality out of these cars. This thing needs to have a killer four cylinder engine that screams. Think more like an S2000 engine, maybe not as technical, more raw, less refined than that engine. Manual options, a simple manual mm-hmm. top. We don't need anything mechanical. It doesn't need to fold. This is a this is a sports car. And I want to embrace the old spiders retro styling. Because the retro like retro is actually good right now. A lot of folks are like like doing good design with retros. Like what Ford Bronco, fantastic looking SUV. I think they nailed it. And I think that's a very popular look. So we're bringing back that spider look like that sleek era like yeah i don't know we can't do pop-ups we can't do anything <laughs> too crazy right uh, but we got to keep it like of course modern ish but rear wheel drive i want absolutely brilliant handling i want the car i don't want it to be phoned in i don't want it to look the part and not perform i want a screamer of an engine a good gearbox and lightweight that's it baby the new your new alfa romeo spider and it's not going to be super pricey i think anyone doing this exercise if it doesn't involve another 124 graduate spider, whatever you want to call it, like sure, just go home. Yeah, we like and that, it, that's an absolute must. Right, and we don't need to make the Nissan Versa of Alfa Romeo, so we can have affordable options, but it's going to be Italian sports car affordable option. Okay. Yes, that's the big thing. We're not trying to compete. We're not, you know, we're not chasing <laughs> that. I want a new GTV. I think. Sedans are kind of dead. I think sports coupes are kind of cool in their own right. And I think Alpha would be the kind of company that can put a boxy sports coupe out there and we would eat it up. We would eat it right up. Uh, and for that, for that one, yeah, it's going to be power plant again. What do they do? Well, they had some pretty spicy V6 offerings back in the day. So I'm thinking with Who's this one, issue? I, maybe. Maybe oh, on this so. one, maybe a regular, uh, really good V6, and then have a performance variant where they introduce old school things, not turbos. Like I want independent throttle bodies. I want a cool intake and exhaust. And we'll have a very special car that sounds special, performs special, manual. This is going to be a rear wheel drive vehicle. And I think there's a spot for that. You know, I think people are still buying M2s. I think this is something, maybe not that level of it's performance. It's not going to be that much harder to make it less ugly than the m2 <laughs> so already always, you've got a leg up i always thought the m2 was kind of plain looking from the back the rear end especially the early ones they just looked so bland but anyway that's another topic but this gtv comes back it's got the cool alpha badge it's got the cool retro styling you know this is going to be a boxy coupe which is going to be awesome so that's it i think that'll sell pretty well and i don't think that one's going to be very pricey but now we're going to start <clears> getting <throat> into the more pricier offerings the julia sure. I think is a success for the company, but I think they're missing some things on that. Uh, we need to stop chasing. They need to stop chasing like the three series first <laughs> off, right? Like you can't that's, beat them. You can't that's a, beat, ta- a tale as old as time. Like can't. every manufacturer that has attempted God. to chase the three series has, has anyone done it successfully? I think people have come close. I think ETS, well, maybe like Caddy, not really. The I don't Jag know. XE was pretty close to like the, the regular three bigger. series. Yeah, I don't know. The XE was the same size, about the same size. Not the really. Oh, well, that's the thing. The three series has gotten so goddamn big. Like, right, right. You're probably right. But in my head, the three series is still small when in actuality, it's like it's pretty damn big. It's like <laughs> it, it dwarfs like an E38 seven series. Yeah, it's an old Alpina B7, basically. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But the, the Julia, uh, the thing is, the base engine is that two liter turbo that I think they mm-hmm. they kind of phoned in. I don't At think that engine, I don't think it has enough personality. I think the performance output's good, but they need to do something to either uncork that engine or stick something more Italian in there. Because two liter turbo, as soon as you say two liter t- turbo, I think of like Volkswagen, Mitsubishi. I mean, well, old school, right? But like yeah. modern, you think you think Volkswagen Group, right? Yep. Like automatic Audi. So I, I want them to do something different with that. They need to they need to really just, I don't know, they need to pare it down maybe a little bit, make it a little more sporting, a little more extravagant looking too, because I, I think it's a good looking car, but I think they could have pushed the envelope for design a lot more. Sure. And made it stand out. It's sleek. It you know, just it's it's a good looking car, and that's a good car. So I'm not changing too much. And we're keeping that one in the roster. So you got to give me some credit there for yeah, not yeah. going you know, all the way overboard. Scorched here. earth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Easily <laughs> uh, fair. 
but the four C is going to be my my flagship. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. my like, uh, you know, just just the killer. And we need to do it right this time. And I know you and me often debate like, was the four C done right? And I still stand by the fact that if you're going to make a sports car, if you're going to make a lightweight focused sports car. You don't throw a slush box in there. You just don't do it. And <laughs> I was just having this conversation the other day about like upsetting people that have DSGs by calling them like a slush box. It it, it came up. It actually kind of came up in the uh, in in cars and bids conversation about. Um, I think it was Doug even was just like, yeah, I like to go to I like to go to like cars and coffees and and talk about when somebody has like a like a PDK car, call it a tip, sure, just to piss them off. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, that's kind of the same thing. It's just like calling somebody with their their DSG, they're like really like top end like bang and shifts DSG, but call it a slush box just because it's not a manual. Those I'm, early I'm DSGs were, mm. but uh, I yeah. like to call it the SMGs that were in the E46s. You want to talk about yeah. a real slush box. That's how the conversation came up because like there was like a nasty email sent in by somebody because it was like somebody, <clears throat> it, it, long story short, it was referred that an SMG is not a manual transmission and the guy got like super spicy about it. Like, oh, oh. no, you're wrong. Actually, if you look at the period articles and, and what the manufacturer is like, no, bro, it's not a manual. Like it's an automated whatever but it's not it's not a manual and it's, smg is not the pinnacle of a performance and so your your point is proven like it should it should have a clutch with it pedal should and yeah use with your foot so that that earlier <clears throat> 4c made like 247 i think it's like 250 horsepower out of a turbocharged four cylinder which is good power for a car that weighs that much i think it weighed carbon 25 2600 pounds yeah. but carbon tub you shouldn't weigh more than a miata just gonna put that out there. Uh, there. How much does an Elise weigh? That's right, two thousand pounds. Yeah, like nineteen, like nineteen eighty six drive yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So, so here's the deal: there's no more Lotus Elise in the market. They're not making those anymore. Ever since they had the weird airbag thing. But anyway, this is gonna be the modern Elise. You know, let's bring it back. Let's strip it down a little more too. You know, it doesn't need to have any features. AC optional. Mm -hmm. yes. So question: so you're gonna so you're gonna have the like the the spider and the 4C in your lineup. Well, so the spider is not like a it's not like an exotic expensive vehicle. Sure. It's, it's like an be, entry level yeah. Miata competitor. Sure. And the 4C is going to be we're going to build it like it should have been. So it's going to have more power. It's going to be more stripped down, more focused. Mid-engine. I even said put a hydraulic steering rack in it, Frank. You see, I thought I thought you were going to go like full full junk on the table and just go manual, manual steering. No, no ABS. Uh, well, it depends if you can get that weight down. I think 2,800 with no manual with a manual rack might be a little tough. But yeah, that'd be pretty raw. We can get the weight down to like 2,200 pounds. I'd say, yeah, maybe. Or like a very uh, yeah, hydraulic's good. You still, I still like the feeling of hydraulic. Uh, and we're going to shake a little bit of that weight off. And I just mm -hmm. think that's the way to do that car. I think, and a good six speed manual, a very tight. And I would even sure. say to you, my friend, you're going dog leg on me. No, even better. Italian sports cars. And I know it's hard to up a dog leg. <laughs> What's a dog leg joke in there somewhere? But yeah. gated manual. Sure. Okay. Fits. I mean, you know what? It Actually, fits. that's above anything else. If you're going to have your manual flagship, which it sounds like this is, unless you're unless you're going to pull a, an 8C out of your out of your back pocket. Your so those pocket. did not sell. But yeah. <laughs> um, the... I, I actually, I, out of all of your ideas, which I like, I like many of them, mm -hmm. believe it or not, oh. um, that's probably my favorite. How good would that get? Because if you, if you look at like all of like the car enthusiast lexicon right now, is yeah. there anything that gets like current mid June, 2023 car guy hornier than a gated manual anything right probably not and so if you launch a new car and you're relaunching a brand and you're unveiling this tomorrow um i think that is an incredibly smart play whether it works or not like as far as like usability yeah. just the, the click clack like like a, oh. a under armor car commercial from 15 years ago yeah um smart very smart play my friend how do you, the the media buzz around that car would be It'd be so substantial. Like every, that would be everything, right? That'd be the headline article. Mm -hmm. 4C <laughs> returns, manual, gated, not even just manual, yeah. gated manual to correct the sins of the past. So what was, fill me in. So you're going, you're going, 
is it going to be another turbocharged powertrain? Like, what do you? What, so that's what, what? tough, right? Like, I, I think you need the turbocharged to make the numbers you want, and you want to keep the displacement low because it is a pretty low weight, and you want to keep the design similar so it's mid-engine. You really can't put something too big back there. I mean, you can. The options are there. You could do like a supercharged V6. And this is your, I mean, yeah. And this is, I mean, well, this is your flagship, right? So it's going to be. You have to slot it significantly above the spider. Yes. So you can't just you can't just go, you know, you you can't just be like, well, it's the big difference is that it's like carbon tub and, and mid engine, mid engine. Yeah. Like you have to, it has to be the numbers have to work, right? So if your spider is say, two hundred and forty horsepower, you can't have a two hundred and eighty horsepower flagship. You got to be three twenty five, three fifty. I don't think I think more than that would probably be up, be obtuse. That spider um, would probably be closer to two, like to put it more in line with the Miata. You know, so yeah, I'd I try to push three to three fifty, and and Smart. four cylinder turbos do that. You know, look at the Mercedes AMG lineup with their four cylinder push to infinity yeah. uh, and beyond. So I th I think you right. do something like but, that, but man, dude, coming back with a carbon tubbed mid engine car with a gated manual, oof. come on, Frank, that thing would just be the headline. So that that's my thought, man. You have your you're not not really entry level, but you have your nicer, you know, convertible sports car. Mm -hmm. You've got your coupe your sports coupe with retro styling you've got the julia still holding it down and you got a 4c i think that's it's kind of a they're kind of a boutique sports car manufacturer so i think that lineup really is very alpha i think you're right i think um you're you're repositioning them as the sub ferrari which I think is a good play because I, if you look at if you look at Italian manufacturers right now, you have Ferrari I, I, and and let me couch this by saying that is sold here in North America. Correct. You have Fer Ferrari and mm -hmm. and Lamborghini, which is made by a coalition of German manufacturers, whatever. Um, and, and so you have that. You have like extreme top of the market. You have the ghost of Fiat, which is I think they're still making like the 500 L or X or whatever monstrosity that thing was made, horrible. and then kind of nothing else. And then you have Alpha, which has all this sports car and racing pedigree at like the earliest, most important stages of the development of the automobile. Yep. Um, up until up until you know, through the 70s, you had the 80s, which there was a, a rise and a fall, and then a, a, a most recent rise to now, which, which is we're, you know, tinkering on the precipice of that being a completely non-impactful brand. And so I think that's smart. I think positioning them is like, look, I, I hate to make this comparison because it's not fair to what we're talking about, but very similar to like GM has Cadillac, which is supposed to be the top, top, top tier. It's not, but it's supposed to be. to be like this used top to be. tier. It used to be. And then below that, you had the not quite that nice, but still nicer than than the entry level stuff, which was Buick. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I don't want to say you're building a, an Italian Buick because that is wildly offensive to everything <laughs> Italian and Alpha. Um, but I think the point is made was just like, hey, like your cheapest Ferrari is a Roma that like bases at like 285 or something and nobody it's impossible to get a base one like you have mm -hmm. to get one with a hundred thousand dollars in equipment and you're gonna have a manufacturer where the flagship probably tops out like special mega launch edition with like you know a, a this and a that and everything and it tops out at like a hundred yeah if that yeah um i think it's a smart play i and and that's kind of sort of where i where i'm where i kind of went with mine um unless unless you've got a hidden do you have a hidden model that's it my have, man have you had uh, the launch? what do you got what do you got to put on this so what what i've got here is 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 similar first and foremost i completely agree with you that the first thing that alpha needs to have is an entry-level convertible full stop yep um and I know probably if you were to like corner some sort of modern automobile 
you know, consultancy group, they would say convertibles are dead. Don't waste your money. But this is already an, like a, a negative volume seller. And so that basically meant their entire history in North America was effectively selling really sexy a middle of the pack performance convertibles. Yep. And so they absolutely have to have that. And in fact, my entire like tagline, because that's the kind of you started, you said, hey, this was going to be our, our, our mantra. My alpha, say 2024 and further, would be Alpha Romeo. Style is everything. I like it. Yeah. And just that. Like it and it would be, you know, maybe you, you offer flashy colors, you have the convertible. When you style it aggressively and sexy and classily, you can even if it's the numbers are slightly not as nice as say the the Miata, which has been refined forever sure. and is a near perfect product where it is today. You can miss some of the marks as far as like ergonomics and, and oh. turn in and things it's, like that if it's it looks expected. like a billion dollars. That's expected with an Italian car, right? Right. And you can sacrifice some some quibbles as far as you know reliability and dealer network and things like that if it just looks dead nuts pretty. Mm -hmm. So you can charge 40, say 39,995 is your entry level for this car as long as you style it aggressively and it does as uh, yeah you're, i think you're right there 200 horsepower i think is is completely right Screamer. it's light it's got a small gas tank i mean you can't get away with manual windows and that shit anymore but you could probably get away with a manual top oh yeah um and just as long as it looks like a million bucks mm -hmm. and has like really sharp turn in yep. right like as long as you get the steering right great like that car will always be interesting like you look at any car, like people put up with way too much bullshit <laughs> look at a look at a ferrari at, like we're, we're coming off the heels of talking to uh our friend kenan our yeah. friend kenan over um uh last week with his ferrari f355 the amount of bullshit that people put up with those cars because they look good and they sound good mm -hmm. and they will always look good and they will always sound good when they're running is through the roof, and that's an, sure. that's that's what the model of an Italian sports car kind of is. So I'm right there with you. You have to have this, and that kind of I almost feel like that needs to be like the populous flagship, not the mm -hmm. real flagship, but I think like it would be yeah. the car of the people flagship. Um, and so you lead with that. I agree. You 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 redo and relaunch the Julia. Um, it it's the only thing in their modern lineup that has any semblance of. <laughs> like actual cachet true yeah um selvio which is a current crossover you probably have to keep it around you probably restyle it i i would restyle it more aggressively it's mm. too rounded like people people couldn't confuse it for any crossover SUV. Kind of. Yeah, like, is it the side new Nissan Rogue or, oh, that, it, oh, that's the new Jaguar, like F Pace or whatever. Like, it's, yep. it's, it's forgettable. You need to make it. What's tough is that everything good that Alpha ever made was like deeply ahead, ahead of the curve of the SUV and CUV era. Right. So there's no, there's no retrospect that you can do to, to, to tie into what it is now, unless you want to put the, you know, the 90s GTV front end on it or something with the circle headlights, which they kind of have done, but yeah, um, you need to restyle that, but just make it way more aggressive, right? Make it a little bit more aggressive in drive and like a lot more aggressive in styling. Um, the stupid Tonale that they just launched, um, it's such an also Rand. I think, I, I think you, you have, you have to have another plug-in hybrid offering it doesn't need to be an suv okay and this product is so doa that you just you ha you you stretch it out as long as you contractually have to with like you know suppliers and things like that and you throw it in the garbage can um and i'm i'm bringing back one that you you also brought back but i'm doing it a little bit differently i'm mm -hmm. You brought back the GTV. Correct. 
I would also like to bring back the GTV, but I would like to bring it back and try and perfect the genre that nobody has done that done yet. And and by that I mean the at, well, let me take that back. Nobody's done well since the early '80s. And and by that I mean the sporty economy car. Okay. So Honda Honda tried with the CRZ, right? Where you had a hybrid. Oh, you had a hybrid economy car that looked great. It was a two seater. Mm-hmm. It was it was billed as being sporty. Yep. And it was really slow and got mediocre fuel economy. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, Cadillac tried to redo the Volt as a luxury sporting <laughs> coupe. You always that was try a to plug-in mention hybrid. You always it's, try to mention ELR whenever you can. Because it's good on paper. <laughs> But it was the only dog, guy that it was his ELR Bible. <laughs> it was wet dog diarrhea in execution, um, and styling, and god awful commercials, and 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 bad marketing. Like it was, like I I knew where they were trying, just like the CRZ. Like I liked where they were trying to go. They just couldn't stop tripping over their own droopy Dude, balls the entire that time. Price that price is what hands that, that car. <laughs> Absolutely, there, there was there was several things that hamstrung hamstrung a, that a confluence of bad bad stuff <sighs> right right on a yeah. good theory mm. and so i i would like to bring the gtv back maybe you call it the gte or the gtv i don't know i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to make the same marketing um uh, mishaps that the good people at gm made with the elr but what i would say is you make a new gtv as like a two plus two similar size maybe similar styling as the very last gtv which we never got but it's like a global kind of icon yep yep and you you make it with a now those were kind of notorious for like the 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 buso the three liter 3.2 v6 Uh um, that made glorious noises but alpha has a again i'm gonna try and be the realist here for a second um and fail Alpha has a long history of really good, like one, you know, 1750 cc twin cam four cylinders, real revy, real hot, um, real fun, real, uh, a lot of um, personality. Yeah. So I would want this car to have a revy four cylinder, okay, twin cam, call it a 1.8, a two liter, whatever you want. We can go smaller now in the modern day of, 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 of what we're doing here. I would want it to be NA, but be a plug-in hybrid with um, that. So you have a Revy four-cylinder with a a hybrid powertrain torque fill. Okay. Okay. So depending on what mode you have it in, right? If you have it in eco mode, it's a plug-in hybrid. Let's say you have your, I'm going to just say 35 miles of range, right? Something okay. like not crazy, not in, like totally doable with what we have today. Um, and it's a smaller, lighter car, so I'm not going huge battery or anything. So you have hybrid. You could probably got to go, I don't want to do C- CVT because that's going to break the entire thing. But you, ha- you have to couple it with some sort <laughs> of automated there. transmission <laughs> that, that whatever. But you have, you, have a, you have a spinny four-cylinder that makes good noises. Like you can put it in like fun mode, which is like you get you get almost all the four cylinder with a little bit of torque fill. You have eco mode where you're putting around an EV and you're driving around the town and you plug it in at night and you do your 32 miles of commute on all electric and you're great. Or you put it in like whole hog, um, you know, alpha, alpha mode or quadra, you know, whatever mode. Um, and then you've got the full, like the full Revy four cylinder with a hybrid torque fill. I, I would love a planet that exists where you can do this with a manual transmission. I'm not convinced that you could, could you actually could pull it off in in the modern world. So probably we're talking like a DSG, um, but you probably need to cross all platforms for Alpha. Like you probably need to spend the money and develop a nice, say, eight-speed DSG like mm-hmm. Hyun- Hyun- Hyundai did, um, and and implement that because you're going to need that across all platforms because right. i also think that they need to be a styling and sporting brand um but that would be my cafe restriction like it. um 
you know, bring the GTV back um, as actually make the sporting commuter a thing. Because pu people pulled it off in the 80s. You had the failure of a Fiero, but the concept was sound. You had the MR2. You had the CRV. You had these like sporting commute cars that were compact and light and tossable. And I want that again, but in a hybrid world. Okay. Yeah. Does that, does that sound feasible? Did I... Yeah, that works. You can, no, you can judge me more aggressively than I, I mean, if you want to. You, you had me at hybrid, <laughs> <laughs> right? Hi, the hybrid GTV. Yeah, that's, that's what the world was clamoring for. Um, but yeah, and and then there, I have two other things I want to bring to market oh, before boy. before we completely run out of time here. One is so Alpha had in the eighties and nineties. We never got it. But they had what the what was the Alpha 33, which was a a compact four door with a hatch, yep, with a boxer motor, Pretty um, cool. and I think in some markets you can get it in all wheel drive. And I still think it's kind of bonkers that it's been since what the 1995, 96, I think 96 technically, yeah that the Subaru Outback has been kind of undefeated in the marketplace. There's been a lot of challengers that have come and gone. Sure. And so I think if you make a sexier Outback, a, a, an Outback with more sporting pretenses, so there's been Outbacks wow. and some of them have tried to have some sporting pretenses, but they've all just been like backhanded to the ground by the marketplace. Like there's never been a truly... You know, there's been like the the closest we had was the, the Outback XT, but even that was a little too big. I want something. I want something the more traditional Impreza Outback size, and I think I think Alpha can. You know, the term the, the Alpha 33 has like zero cachet in North America. Right. So you probably got to name it something because apparently that's what we do now. You can't have numerics. I don't think you bring back the 164 in, in this, but you you make a. You make it as a, a straight up wagon only entry level offering with all wheel drive to to fight, but to fight the Outback, but more more than anything, you fight the Outback's image. Okay. Because the Outback has the they've absolutely nailed the like the outdoorsy. Yeah. Um, you know, take your take your mountain bike and your your two golden labs. Um, and your girlfriend's girlfriend with you to the mountains to go hiking. Like they've nailed that and they've been impossibly successful with them to a point where like, that's kind of the, I, I would say there's like a marketing case study and how successful the Outback brand oh, sure. is. Hot, you know, but utility, I, utility over everything else, quality of the interior, meh, just needs uh, all yeah, head maybe. gaskets, meh, you know, like there's a lot of things oh. that I, I think there's, I think the formula is great, but I think the execution the formula is great. The marketing is great from Subaru's perspective, but right. I think there was a slightly sportier offering um, because nobody's buying sedans and there's some, there's a good enthusiast pushback against CUVs. And I think this could straddle that line in the middle okay. yeah. um, where you have a, you have a, a compact to midsize sexy wagon with more sporting pretenses, but all wheel drive. Um, I, I think there's money to be had there. And then I want a flagship. My my favorite is my favorite is Alpha of all time was a '70s Alpha. The Montreal, okay, front engine, really small V8. I think a two. I think it was a two eight, two point eight liter V8. Yeah, it was super small. I remember that. Um, very pretty, pretty, pretty car. When I see that car. I and, and I think of a modern equivalent. I think of that uh, Hyundai, the concept car, they the concept car, yep. the seventy Vision seventy four, I believe it was the little wedge. I think I think of that car, which is like if Jario had sex with the Jario and 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 they made a Jario baby, that yes. baby would have styled that car. Hmm. And so I I kind of I would kind of want to steal that lunch a little bit from okay. that concept car and make a new front engine i would love to have a i would love to have it a v8 
and be like, oh yeah, Lexus, everyone like, oh my God, Lexus, they're making the last luxury V8 front engine coupe and sedan and, and, and blah, blah, blah. And we're never getting these anymore. It's a swan song. And then Alpha to be like, hey, remember those GTVs that like everyone was giving us crap about because it didn't have a Buso V6 anymore and instead it was a plug-in hybrid? Now I get to have my cafe lunch and eat it too yep. because I have a like a, a smaller two-seat flagship 70s like wedge era styled oh. pretty, pretty, pretty thing. I like it. Um, and I would still call it the Montreal. The 8C was fun and all, but like flawed. And 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 I I really love that era of of styling. And and that would be my flagship. Is I'm bringing back the Montreal. I would launch it in Montreal. Trudeau would would um, I don't know take pictures with his creepily old wife. Um, or am I mixing it up? No, that's the other. That's the other guy that speaks French. That's the uh, Marcon. <laughs> the other. That's one. the one where his wife is like 40 years older than him. Either way, uh, you have it in Montreal. Canadians are involved. Um, Glove box full of poutine. I got the you. habitants. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be. It'll be. Carrie Price will be there. It'll be interesting. But that would that would round out. I like my that. vision. Is is so you know, I got a, a splash of practicality, but then I brought back the Montreal. So hey, that, that's good, man. I mean, like honestly, we presented two different cases, but we stuck kind of the same idea. Like Alpha needs to stick to its roots and mm-hmm. you know deal with sports cars again. Yeah, uh, and I like it, and I like Alpha. You know, I've always I've always admired their stuff. I've never owned anything, and there's probably a reason for that. But it, it's just I think they make cool they make cool stuff, man. And it's just like we both see the writing on the wall. I think for the company, so I hopefully they like kind of do something with it. You know, I just yeah. I, I don't like the yeah what the current offering is not doing it for me. So no, it's not, and it's not doing it's not in who the, the hell thing. am it's I? Not doing it for, well, matter. it's not doing it for anybody. Like, right, it's, right. It's the mark the marketplace has spoken. They're they're fading. They're kind of you know they're listing at sea. They're gonna go uh, <laughs> full to keep it Italian. They're 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 very co- uh, Costa Concordia right now, where they're like oh. they're over at a forty five degree angle. And I don't know who their CEO is, but maybe he's gonna jump accidentally fall into a lifeboat like the the captain of that cruise ship did. But um, it's it sucks because like it's you just go back like. 90s and prior and they had a hundred years of just unbelievable like sex and pedigree and, and, yep. and just really cool stuff and Pretty so bad. yeah it's it's it we need to we need to bring it back um you, you know what else i think i think we need to bring back is it our weekly occurrence known as the automotive print ad quiz game <laughs> it is and Does i that think as a win <laughs> well we'll see we'll see if it counts as a win because let me i need close, to figure out if uh let me close the lap right. wait i'm quizzing you you are all over that's me right all over that's my right. neck and chest well i'm so, gonna call up the ad do you mind uh taking the viewers to the I will. Uh, i'm gonna walk i'm gonna walk the good people the yeah. uninitiated through this dog and pony show which if um you are hearing this for the 80th something time because <laughs> we've pretty much done this damn near since day one then um i'm not wearing a hat but if i was i would tip it to you so thank you for putting up with all this nonsense but for those who are tuning in for the first time um hot off the heels of our last episode then here's how this works uh my friend chadwick here will find a a, hi chadwick a a magazine ad from the 80s 90s to i don't know call it the mid 2000s um and he's going to read the print type copy from that advertisement he mm-hmm. will then redact out any overly identifying information so you're you're talking your your makes your models your copyrighted bits and pieces and then after he's done reading that to me i will have 10 minutes to have three guesses upon i try and figure out what the make model and uh, model year within at least that generation of yeah. vehicle we are talking about i can ask for hints if i need them between failed guesses but i won't fail at my guessing and i'm just gonna leave it to chadwick here i love it the ad all right so and you have 10 minutes on the clock my friend once we get through the ad so the ad itself if you're ready for this imagery is the vehicle it's a two-page spreader vehicle is right center mass and it's i can't really describe where it takes place but it's an urban area it's okay. dimly lit, pretty cool, very, very atmospheric. The car straight on front view. Oh, feel looking right at already. You. Okay. You ready for this? I am. It loses nothing in the translation. 
it says fast in any language, the 175 horsepower, mm. six speed mm. blank is here. Sport tuned McPherson strut front suspension, large front and rear stabilizer bars, front so strut tower brace, available ABS, 17 inch wheels with Z rated tires. Ooh. It also translates well inside with an available nine speaker 300 watt rockford fosgate powered audio system oh, man. leather wrapped steering wheel blank style sport seats and sport gauges prepare to become fluent in the ways of performance oh man what are we talking about? that's it baby what are oh, we doing man. with frank i'm gonna go ahead and start it you got some good text there's specs. some good stuff like there's some gaping holes yes which i'm used to but there's um there's some good stuff in there so i feel attacked <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um statutory gape so mm-hmm. the first off six speed manual mm-hmm. we're talking and 175 horsepower. We're talking late 90s at earliest. Hmm. Rockford Fosgate <laughs> really fits right in there, right? I was waiting for you to go Typhoon, or, okay. or and then I'd be and Monsoon, then I'd be, or sorry, that's what I meant. Sorry, Monsoon. Yeah, I got you, Monsoon, maybe. and then I'd be like, all right, we got like a, a, a Jetta GLI or something. 175 is a really interesting really interesting uh, horsepower figure because there's a lot of things I, I mentally plug in in this era that is a little bit above or a little bit below mm-hmm. 175 it's got some big sway bars we got no door Whoa. count we got no cylinder count we got no um front wheel drive rear wheel drive but at, at at this point it's gotta be it's gotta be front wheel drive um the Rockford Fosgate, and based and 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 based upon what they're talking about with getting lost in translation and things like mm. that, I, I, there's almost a zero percent chance it's a domestic manufacturer. There's some good stuff in this ad, man. Um, boy, part of me, mm. what's tricky is a lot of the like Volkswagen offerings of this time, which just kind of feels like a Volkswagen ad. We're, we're we're we should be at either like 150 horsepower for the 1.8 T or the 180 horsepower, which is right in the unless there's some weird they adjusted the SAE gross to net or something weird that it it should be 180, not 175. Toyota's also there close. I don't think they did the Rockford Fosgate on a Celica or a Matrix X Matrix XRS. Or a and a Corolla XRS, but maybe I don't know. And and those were, I know the Corolla was a little lower. I want to say 170, and then the Celica and stuff was 180. So we're again we're 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 straddling that number. Uh, I don't. There wasn't enough about turbos and stuff to make me think this was like a protege, uh, a, a speed protege. Um. Ooh. <laughs> Could this be a? You know what I think it maybe is. I'm gonna take my first guess before I all of a sudden talk myself into running out of time. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna call this a 2002. Mm. Nissan Sentra SER. Was it the Spec V? I'm going to say SER Spec V. Final answer, Bob? Mm. The part I omitted in the uh, interior, Mm -hmm. which will help you out a little bit more, is Skyline style sports seats and sport Uh gauges because this is a 2001. Sentra oh, okay. SCR spec yes. V. 
<laughs> it is a spec V. Okay. Good wow. job, man. I, I man. feel like we need to call this car out because this, I, these things what? are dirt cheap because well, it had engine issues. That oh, two, yeah. That 2.5. But anyway. Do you know do you know why those engines ate themselves? Do you know the, the lore? What, was it something to do with the head gasket on the earlier ones? Sort of. So I think there were two things. I think there was that. I think they had yes. head gasket issues. But I think the more common thing was so those had that was the the 2.5 liter that was just it was the base well not in the spec v but just the standard ser which i think had 10 fewer horsepower or something 15 fewer horsepower the ultima engine was the base 2.5 ultima four cylinder which those cars got some grief because the b13 ser and the b14 200 sx SER had the SR20 DE, which was a real spinny motor. Yep. You could beat the brakes off it. It would rev to 7,500 RPM and you can bounce off the rev limiter. It didn't give a rat's ass. Mm -hmm. But then this 2.5 was just like, oh, we'll just take like the torquey four cylinder out of our family sedan and plug it into the lighter car. And so it only revved like 6,400 RPM. It had no character. Mm -hmm. And so it also retained just like the standard ass exhaust manifold that had the the catalytic converter baked into it that's right and what happened was the cats would fall apart and they would overheat and then they would break and then the, it, just by course of like cold starts and things like that it would end up sucking bits and pieces because it was just on the exhaust manifold back into the cylinder head and then you have like chunks of ceramic like bouncing around and it would just blow the motor up and and they would just eight and eight and eight but it was like the q what was that the qr 25d oh, i think something uh, like that something like that they but the thing is they really did a great suspension job on this car they did the spec v was focused on suspension and handling and those it really an L, was those had an lsd right the spec v's i think limited got an lsd slip. that's right yeah so and the six speed manual was pretty damn good for the price point and oh, it they were looked cheap great. as hell new do you remember the so the first ones that came out looked just like GTR body kits on them? Yeah, and it's it's a pretty cool look at that wing. They were like you get that bright yellow color. Yeah, the red blue, seats the inside. Red. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty cool car. Let me uh, let me see if I can flip my laptop around so you can see the ad is. Oh, look at that! Cool. It's a it's Japanese like industrial, right? So I didn't yeah, want to give right. that away. Yeah. Um, but man, what a what a cool car! Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't rule one out of me owning one someday. That's you know, the thing. Like, like I like Nissan. That's you know, what's interesting is that's one so of those. So cheap too. <laughs> that's one of it, well, that's it. Like they were so cheap, cheap new, and then they had problems, yeah. and then they got really cheap, and then they got really, really cheap. The wrong and hands now you for can't sure. you cannot find one that is like unfucked, mm -hmm. and you can't unfuck one, at least not here in California. And so right. like. It's um, really interesting. I had I work. I used to back in the insurance days. I worked with a, with a gal. She had one and she loved it. It was bright yellow, um, with the the yeah the the like the perforated seats. Oh, it's cool. Um, yeah, and um, she loved 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 that car. Um, and like they're cool. Like like that that is a car. If you find like a mint stock one with like thirty thousand miles, oh, that'd be so cool. You can probably buy it for no money. Like that, like that is a car. Like there's a lot of cars. Like you have a thirty thousand mile GTI, you can sell it on any of the auction websites and get a lot of money. Right. If you have a thirty thousand mile one of these, you can sell it for one of the on one of these auction sites to get like sixty eight hundred dollars. Like it's <laughs> not going to be a lot of money. Yeah. But it's going to be cool. Like I just, I don't know. I can't remember the last time I've seen one that was not ruined. Yeah, they get they fell into bad hands. Maintenance falls behind. The paint wasn't the best. Uh, you see them a lot of time with mismatched body panels because kids are beating the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, but I, I thought it was worth calling out. We like ourselves yeah. some Sentra, and that's a cool one, man. I'm glad you got it. And it was kind of unique in its time. Like it was like a it was like a cool like economy sports car mm -hmm. that was very different from everything else. So and it I was usable. It. Like it was cool it was car. a good size. Um... Yeah. And that's a car I haven't thought about in a long time. It took me a minute to like work myself through the manufacturers and be like, oh. Cool ad. I, I really like the style, yeah. like the look of the ad too. So yeah. we had to run it. Um, Shout out to the Century we, SER. We should celebrate your win. That was very good, Frank. Uh, and let's do a little uh, PCP, little we project. Should, we should. 
project car progress if you will we should did, do that did you, um did you have anything to report on we should do really quick pcp actually we should we should we should inhale it or whatever you do however you do pcp i need to like watch like i need to watch someone do pcp in real life to figure it out and then emulate on the pod um <laughs> until then you know what i have made i i've made a modicum of, of progress so Speedy um, PCP round begins now. That's right. So where we left off the, on the 924, the NA 924, not the one that has a turbo and spilled its oil all over my garage, um, was the exhaust was cracked, and I think I think it needs exhaust manifolds. Mm. So, or sorry, not exhaust manifolds, but uh, motor mounts. So I stopped breaking my exhaust all the time. Yeah. So took it to the same exhaust shop that did the repairs before because it had a crack just ahead of the the cat. Took it back there. I'm like, hey, man, it's cracked again. I don't think it's your fault. I think there's something else going on. But put it on a lift. Let you be the judge. Fix fix the broken exhaust. We'll go from there. And it's like, well, this now it's after the cat. And there was a section of pipe where it had already been replaced. Hmm. And so he's like, I kind of want to cut this whole section out and put a whole new section in. But um, he's like, come with me. So we looked under it, under the rack. And he's like, your motor mounts are gone. I was like, okay, that's kind of, I was like, between you and me, Total tracks. Like I, I kind of figured. Um, he's like, your passenger side one looks like it's been replaced not that long ago. Your driver side one is gone. Like it's gone. Like here it is. I'm like, yep, I agree. It's gone. So I said, okay, weld it up. I'll gingerly drive it back home. I won't take it on another pre-loofed rally and break my exhaust again. Cool. Right. Um, so then I just like, okay, well, let me just find new motor mounts. They kind of don't exist. I even called like the Porsche Classic Center, and they told me to kick rocks. They're like, "Nope, yeah. they didn't, sorry." I found a guy. I found a guy that was selling used motor mounts. Like they're still in good shape, but they're that's a market yeah. for like for like sixty bucks a pop. And I'm like, hmm. no. Um, but then I happened to find so these cars have a bit of a following in the UK for whatever reason, and yeah. I found a place in the UK that makes updated mounts so it's like a rubber it's like a rubber mount but with like a metal cage part so instead of being this big huge chunk of rubber that just flexes and falls apart mm -hmm. it's like a rubber cage that's built or sorry a metal cage that's built with some flex in it and then a rubber biscuit with a bolt going through it okay and that's the solution and i said okay so I ordered both i ordered two they're supposed to be universal for right and left even though oem they were different but oh, they're the same and I'm like, okay, get me both. I got the, the the priciest, fanciest ones. They had urethane ones, and I decided I like my teeth, so I just got the rubber ones. Sure. Um, they were it was like three hundred dollars shipped for the pair. That's not too bad. Which isn't too bad. Like half of that was shipping, um, from the UK. But we'll see. They I ordered them, kind of basically a week ago, and they had you know it's probably two weeks out, but, um, that's where it is. So it's quiet. The exhaust leak is gone, but I don't really want to like go beat yeah. it up and, until I get new motor mounts. So that's my progress there. How about you? Yeah, man. So uh, real quick, uh, the 300 ZX twin turbo, the fan said hello to the fan shroud. On these cars, the fan shroud is pretty well designed. Uh, you can pull the bottom section off. That way you can pull your radiator and fan up without having, or fan shroud out without taking off the fan. Pretty smart design, right. except over time that gets a little loose. And if you're driving spiritedly, sometimes it flaps at the right time of fan blades right there. Oops. And that happened. So made the worst noise. There's there's the sound of catastrophic engine failure. Sounds like a, a clutch fan spinning and hitting plastic under your hood. That's Thinner exactly that. what it sounded like. Yep. So uh, that was horrible. I had to rip it off with my hands out on a road because it has screws and I didn't have any tools with me. So I'm just like ripping my fan shroud. Everybody's driving by like, look at this fucking guy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just shredding the, to get it out of there because... I don't want it to get caught in the fan, God forbid, and break the water pump neck off, you know, like yeah, what happened that. to the OEM. One Again. Uh, so I, I took that off and it, it didn't overheat at all. So what does that say about the design? Yeah. Uh, it, it held up good enough, but I replaced it OEM fan, OEM shroud from Nissan, still available, uh, not even that badly priced. Uh, super easy install. And now it's just, it's fine. It's fine. You, you sure fine. that was just, just the shroud and it, it wasn't also motor mounts? motor mount gate no motor mounts are great it's just right. they just get floppy because it actually the bottom part of the shroud actually just clips in 
and the and then top the, was a little, little loose. Christmas trees wear out and they, they stretch out. Not even that. It's like a little like it's just kind of like a slotted clip that holds it up, which is crazy. So a little bit <laughs> okay. of a little bit of flop and the fan blade caught it and you know it damaged both. So I replaced both. You don't want to have like an uneven fan, you know, where it just kind of flops off and right. And then you need another water pump again because it the 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 vibrations really. or your radiator because it decides to spin out and cut your radiator up but that was yep. it pretty easy install the car's happy again this car i don't think it's that hard to work on i think the only hard thing is turbo stuff if you have to replace the turbos right. but so far timing about water pump all this kind of stuff standard fare for a 90s sports car so hey cool yeah. that's my pcp baby you want to take us home we should we should go home and you should go home and dream about this podcast as you drift off to sleep uh which is i know that's what i do i know that's what chadwick does and i'd like to thank y'alls for uh for doing just that and listening along this is another pointless automotive podcast uh if you're not watching on uh, the YouTubes, feel free to. Yeah. Otherwise, keep listening on all your favorite listening devices and places. Um, you can follow us on an old, nearly abandoned Instagram page, which is uh, at uh, APA Podcast. Um, and uh, I am Frank, and I am around on uh, uh, all of the things at uh, the photographer's garage. How about you, Mr. Chad of the Wick? Yeah, you guys can follow me on YouTube mostly, Auto Obsessive Garage, Rescues, Restorations, and Reviews. Uh, sometimes on Instagram, about the same frequency as our uh, another Pointless Automotive podcast Instagram. But again, like Frank said, thanks again, guys, for listening. We really do appreciate it. Feel free to rate and review the show. Right. That's right. Please and do. We'll, ca we'll catch you next time. Yes. Until Take then. Take care. Happy trails, homies. Bye.